Minimal's all they're asking for, and that's all you need to put. Let's drill and tap the 256 clamp screw. There is a secondary elevation on this rod for an oil cup on the large end. Make sure that you drill and tap this accordingly. Just orient the part correctly. And this is a very strong argument for small tap handles or wheels. Tap handle is not going to clear the 45 degree, so we're going to use a wheel on this one. Alright. Life is good. Let's move that piece out to the edge of the vise, or however you need to set it up. Let's split it in half. I am back on the tooling plate for the slot. They're asking for a 1 16th slot. I have an 051 saw I'm going to go through there with because it's very handy. It's very sharp. First thing I did was register the bottom of my saw on the top of my part right here. Wait for it to ring and then I moved down half the thickness of the saw. And then I moved down half the thickness from here to there, the distance. So I found the center of the saw first and then I found the center of the part. I'm going to just plunge it straight through to the center and hope it all ends well. So let's do it. Oh, a lot of detail on a small end. That makes sure everything's sharp, make sure everything's tight. Cross your fingers, away we go. I like it, let's do it. This is one of those features that if you had to do it over again, you would have to pick exactly what you want to see. This particular boss on the outside is not true to the hole. The hole is very close to being centered on that boss. And you can see that the slot is below center. There is a six thousandths of an inch difference here, and that's probably because this side is tapered really bad that's not cleaned up. Spy face itself is minimal but it does serve the purpose for the screw. The threads do start on the bottom side of the split which is awesome. I did not have to do anything to it. And as far as pinch capability is concerned, let's see what it takes to lock that down. It's snug. And that is surprisingly secure. Surprisingly secure. A little upset about that but you're not going to see it when it's installed. Let's just for fun put it together. And these parts keep getting smaller. I'm going to have to get a bigger viewfinder on my camera.
that is a beautiful thing right there. Everything clears like it should. The rod and the cross head are very close to being concentric. I would say you expect any better concentricity, you're being unrealistic. It's a casting. Alright, I like it. Got to do the other side now. Let's take this side, cut this off, do the exact same thing. I'm digging this. After calculating the distance from the flat on the end of the part to the 3 inch 375 parting line after this thing is supposed to be cut apart, I know what my depth of my drills have to be from this surface down. I am hanging on the surface plate or my little tooling plate and we're going to counter bore, spot face, drill and tap a pair of 540 holes, three quarter center to center, centered about the boss right here. Use an edge finder on the back and move forward. Use a pin in your drill chuck. Contact one side, contact the other side, split the difference. That's your zero, 375 either way. The depth for my features has to be <laughs> All right, it's got to be 468 and a half. Now that is going to vary depending on what you come up with, but because the part is 4 inches 030 to the end here, that's 4 inches 030 minus 3 inch 375. That's the drop to the split line. So that's how far everything has to be drilled from this surface, not that surface. Don't mess that up. I will center drill this first. And away we go. Now, a lot of you guys are about to cringe, but I'm going to put a 730 seconds end mill in my drill chuck, and I'm going to come down and I'm going to spot face that. It's minimal. There's little chance of the taper unlocking because there is no taper and there's no side load. I'm coming straight down. It's going to be a very superficial cut. And this is the only time that I will ever put an end mill in a drill check. Ever. Strictly clean up the surface, do not get carried away. This is the clearance drill. This is the drill that will allow the cap to float on the screws as you torque it down. I've got to go 468 deep. I'm going to make contact with my little plateau here. Gentle contact. And I'm going to set my quill stop. At the same time, I zero out my table. I'll zero the table first. Lock it. The quill stop up. Contact with the drill. I'm going to stay a sixteenth of an inch shy. Four hundred deep.
All right, you've heard me say it before, and I'm going to say it again. The secret to a good hole, a good small tapped hole, is true alignment. Make sure everything is nice and straight. Use a small handle. Don't use a T handle, and don't let everything hang out five miles. Keep the tap running true, and you will reduce the potential for that tap snapping off tremendously. You'll get much better feel as you're cutting. And keep an eye on the tap body. Make sure that is running true. If it's starting to whip out and run out because of what you're using, rethink the setup. The more delicate these taps get as they get small, the more that that small misalignment is going to impact the integrity of the hole, possibly snap that tap off. It's just not a good idea. Okay, if all went well, the clearance hole on the top is about a sixteenth of an inch shy of the parting line. And now I just have to figure out how to hold it to make that parting line. And everything will be just wonderful. There you go. Beauty. Okay, let's change the setup, get the slitting saw, and turn this into two pieces. Back on the tooling plate, clamping it very similar to the way it was clamped when we did the first surface of the end journals. Indicate the flat on the end so that it runs true, call it a day. Now when we bring the slitting saw down, we're going to make contact with that surface. We are not going to take half of the slitting saw. We need to go directly to a specific line. On this part it is 468 from that surface down. I am not going to split it. I'm not going to split the thickness of the saw. I want to hit this bottom circle right on the center line. Maybe stay a thou or two proud just so I can clean it up if I need to. All right. And that is basically the setup. Let's get a three-quarter collet in there, put the slitting saw Cut this thing off. Hold your breath. Camera is around the back side of the part now with the teeth the way they are. I can expect one side of this to cut really nice and I can expect the other side to start to sing. The way these teeth are positioned right now, cutting on that side, this side, it's going to drive the part against the tooling plate. Cutting on this side, it's going to want to clap it away. So if there's going to be any vibration, it will be on the side that uh, the teeth push it away from the fixture. So let's get a gentle scratch on the top of that, move down the dimension, and just let's do it. For what this material is, a coarser tooth blade would be ideal, but this is probably the sharpest blade I have, and I'll just keep an eye on the teeth. Do not let it pack up. All went well, the 375 pin should sit right in there. Keep 
goes. That is a beautiful thing. I love it. Very nice. While it's in this setup, there is an oil hole that goes directly in the center. Note on the print, put that oil hole in while it's clamped up, solid and located. Just to be safe, anything that's proud is coming up. This is the cap side of the connecting rod. It is inverted in my vise, indicated across the flats. I'm going to take about 60 thousandths off the face on both sides, and I will assemble it and I will measure the hole. I would like to get as close as possible and possibly not even have to bore this again. So 60 coming off right now. After assembly and checking the hole in two different directions, the difference is 11 and a half. I am going to take 11 off of each edge of that, and with any kind of luck, I won't have to set this back up and bore it. If this hole is elongated, if it's longer across the journals than it is across the screw uh, direction, it will knock. And if it's too tight, then it'll pinch the rod. So I'm shooting for about a half a thousandth of clearance here. 11 thousandths coming off. find this out together for the first time together I promise I have not put this together but I'm really looking forward to it now a couple of punch marks or some other witness mark to let you know which way this cap goes on is probably not a bad idea but I have one side that's rough cut or it's actually not rough at all but it's milled and the other side is run across the piece of emery so This is a 375 pin. This is the pin that I bored it with. And the camera is right in my way. Let's move it closer to the edge so I can cheat. following well this pin will come out <laughs> are you kidding me look at that wasn't even bored in place there is an oiler hole in there that will connect to the oil cap and this is the side that will be up in the assembly Purely for the aesthetics of this particular area where the oiler goes, I'm going to clean that area off and I'm going to try not to hit the radius of the main rod area itself. Just clean it up. This is another highly visible surface, so once you've hit all the numbers on the print and you feel you are correctly aligned, put a pin in your drill chuck and bring it down and just see how it looks as far as 
left to right, in and out. And once you're happy with the fact that the pin sits in the middle of the land, which is driven by the size of the part that you formed in an earlier operation, if that is not symmetrical, then technically once you pick up that thickness and split it in half for the y-axis alignment, the cup will be off. So stick a pin in there and if you have to cheat a little bit, so be it. So long as it intersects the hole that comes in from this side of the rod, where's my finger, there it is, there's a hole in here, these two holes have to meet or this has no purpose whatsoever. This is the oil canal that comes through and lubricates the crank. Now let's put some threads in there. 256. Be careful what size center drill you use. Make sure that the pilot on the center drill is not larger than the drill that you need to follow it with. That'll get you in some trouble. Technically I just use my center drill as a spot drill. You'll definitely feel it when it breaks through. Confirm that with a little blast of air. Either way, let's try this way. Good to go. Time for the time. print calls for an eighth of an inch deep here. Uh, we'll see how that works out. I'm not sure I'm going to do that. I may go a little deeper just so that the cup sits on the cup and not on the threads. Print does say an eighth of an inch, but I'm going all the way until it bottoms out. If you do buy or own one of these tap guides, do yourself a favor and keep a variety of springs available to re uh, regulate the, the pressure on here. For a small tap like 256 going into a piece of brass or aluminum, you're not going to want the same pressure that you're going to use for half 13 with a piece of steel. So keep, a, keep an assortment of springs and keep them handy and make sure you use the correct one. Let's pop it out, blow it out, put it together. At this stage of the game, if everything went well and all your holes are in line, you should be able to lay a pin across your journals and assemble the crosshead. And there should be no lift or twist on either side of this. If the journals are true to the crank center line, if the, every, if the center line is true to the hole, the holes are axial aligned, everything should sit as shown. If there's any problem with the rod, the rod is going to bind, the rod is going to cause a lift, and the rod may also want to lift one of these sides. And that is down. Clamp feature in the front, you can see the purpose of that. The oil cup will bleed down through the hole that you cannot see that connects to the one of the rod journals and the rod will never actually sit like this of course this would normally be an eccentric but this does represent the alignment of everything there you go 
go ahead. You do not necessarily have to do it the way you just saw it. That is an extreme situation and I trust my equipment. I knew that I could hit each half and make it come out to the extent that I like it. If there is any wiggle in the pin, there's about five tenths in this one. This is not, there's some wiggle in there. Take the cap and run it across a piece of emery and work it in until you're pleased. I think this is a absolutely outstanding working fit and I'm not going to mess with it. I'm going to cut this back off here at a later date. I'm going to probably use a Dremel and clean that off. 256 oil hole in there and we are done. That was a fun little part. I thoroughly enjoyed that. Appreciate you watching. Thank you very much. Joe Pye Advanced Innovations. I'm out. Here's a little bonus material for you. If you have a Kurt style vise and you have a handle that looks like this. Personally, I hate these handles and quite often, if you're not careful, the handle will extend too far down and jam in the ways of the machine. This is one of those setups that takes three hands to settle in. I am doing the 256 oiler hole for the connecting rod, which is why I thought it was a good time to show this. This is a setup that you need two hands to hold the block down, hold the part against, and there's just really no way to tighten the vise. Well, here's my solution to that since I like a speed handle better than a long handle. Get the whole setup to the point where it's snug, everything. It doesn't have to be in position right now, but just snug. And position the handle at about oh, 4 o'clock or so, so nothing, it's not going to hit anything down here. Now here's the trick. Unloosen the vise and balance the handle at 12 o'clock. You've got everything over here all nice and good. Hit it with your elbow. The weight of the handle will close the vise and secure the part. At that time you can put your speed handle back on or you can torque it down to the final spec. But starting with it at the 12 o'clock and letting gravity finish it off for you that's just wonderful. Make sure that when the gravity does swing around, which is why I say to position it at 4 o'clock to start, that it doesn't encounter any other part of the machine and just swings freely. Good tip to know, and it will certainly save a lot of frustration. Now let's put an oil hole in this thing. 